ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Jan Adri Janssens and John Bockelmans to the stage. Good afternoon. Hello. Good afternoon. We're going to do a joint presentation. My colleague Jan and I will talk about the things which really matter. The things which matter to make our cities more livable. Jan and I work for IMEC. IMEC is one of those jewels in Belgium. We are the world leader in research for nanotechnologies, uh, nano nanotechnology and also digital technologies. And one of those digital technologies areas is smart cities. And as you can see from what is happening in the digital world, a lot is being focused on, on digital twins. And a digital twin is actually a representation of what is really out there, but in a digital model. And that digital model can be used to create a better wind turbine, to create a better car engine. It is to create or pre-create, to model, to simulate before you actually create. So talking about smart cities, Jan, what are we doing in a smart city from a digital twin perspective? Well, if we want to look at how we can model what's happening in a city, we've been doing that for quite a while, even before there were digital twins. So let's first talk about the paper twin. What is a paper twin of a city like? Well, here we have an old map uh, from 1880, the city of Antwerp, where you see we're zooming in, the, zooming in the neighborhood we are right now, and the red street you see there, uh, the Nouvelle Avenue uh, Maritime, that's a street that was being planned right then. And what we wanted to do, what they wanted to do, is to simulate the impact of an all nude street. So what about we put there a street, and what would the impact be on the entire city? So they were making a paper twin of the city in the, in, in the would-be situation to simulate, to play with uh, what it would look like. I, I even see that in the yellow area, I see there like a station where we are at right now. I wonder Indeed. if that station has been planned but never been built. And when I look at those things and when I think about the digital world, and if you know Harry Potter and how he can make his paper twins come alive into his newspaper, if only we had that new Potter kind of, Harry Potter kind of capabilities. And that's exactly what we're doing from a digital twin perspective. We're actually creating the digital version of the city. You can see uh, we're floating by the cathedral with its one tower of the city of Antwerp. So we've digitized the roads, the infrastructure, everything happening besides the roads, the buildings. And you can see a level of detail which is important to simulate things like air quality, things like movement, things like people moving within the city. And that's what we need to actually create the next generation of infrastructure within a city. So Jan, why don't you go a little bit deeper now into, now we have the model, what are we doing now with those models well, to create that next level of infrastructure? Let's go deeper, John, by zooming out. Okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> let's take full perspective on the city itself. So the city is a large ecosystem where everything interacts, models interacting with each other, no thing is not connected to something else. This, this map, this view, is basically the canvas. The canvas on which we will draw, which we will superimpose the models and try to see what is happening. For example, on a map like this, on this canvas, we can superimpose traffic intensity. Uh, where, is, where are the streets busy? You see, of course, the tunnels are, uh, below the river Skelt are always busy. So you get superimposed on the map your traffic intensity, but it, it, it's not just traffic intensity. Traffic mobility is very important. It's interconnected to a lot of other aspects, like you said, air quality, like you said, noise. We're not just putting uh, traffic intensity there. This is also capacity. Capacity is how many cars per minute or per hour can that road swallow. It, has, it depends on the speed of the road. It depends on how many lanes you have. So. Things like traffic intensity, traffic capacity. But even more than that, eh, as we said, it's related to other aspects of your city. So what about we see eh, with, our, uh, with our current diesel engines, there's a lot of uh, fumes exhausts. So nitrogen dioxide, how uh, would we put that model on the same map? So we see the highly polluted areas uh, inside our city. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, not enough green. And that's of today, right? This is what we have today. Uh, and even more, of course, something that is very much related to health and stress 
is not just uh, nitrogen dioxide, but it's also noise. Uh, the noise levels in a city, they're all very important for well-being. So if we have this canvas, this virtual playground with interconnected models, we can do a lot of testing and simulating on what's happening. And indeed, as you said, your Harry Potter-like uh, interventions, let's see what happens if we actually intervene. For example, for noise, uh, we have this view. You see the ring road around Antwerp, it's a very noisy area. Let's zoom in on that, uh, on that major intersection. Uh, let's get the model out there. You see there's already an existing sound barrier. A313, right? That's yeah, the barrier the, next to the A313. Yeah. On the E313. But let's build, let's extend it, a 10-meter high wall, a sound barrier, and let's create one, let's simulate one. And then let's see what happens with our noise models. The effect on the city. Yeah. So we're drawing, the, we're drawing it as we speak, well, as the movie shows. Yeah. Um, OK, we're making it long enough to, uh, to have an actual impact. OK, now the data gets uh, uploaded, the models get calculated, and let's see, it calculates nearly real time what the effect would be. And you see the impact of a 10 meter high wall is quite significant for the uh, neighboring. Uh, a lot less people having the impact, uh, the pim impact getting uh, smaller. So I guess, wasn't there a plan anywhere in Europe to make this kind of tunnel system yeah. happen, uh, Jan? So of course, you know that uh, the Antwerp Ring, uh, they, <laughs> will, uh, they will try to uh, make right. tunnels of it all. You'll see if a 10 meter high wall has just this impact, what would the tunnels exactly. uh, have on quality of life here? But it's not just noise. Uh, we, can, uh, we can also see what the impact would be on uh, pollution. Let's see, uh, again, nitrogen dioxide. Let's zoom in on the, the city park here in the center. And uh, let's, simulate, uh, let's simulate making it car free. Yeah, so we have the city park here. And let's close down all the streets around the city park. Let's okay. say, OK. Uh, this is, of course, uh, very uh, NIMBY, uh, or, or uh, yes in my YIMBY, like everyone would, uh, would of course, if like to have a car free street. If only we could do it like that at our homes, right, with our computers. So we've closed down the streets. Let's zoom out again. And then let's see what the impact would be, the simulated impact would be on uh, air quality. Uh, specifically nitrogen dioxide. It, needs it takes to a while to a calculate, bit. but yeah. you see immediately the impact now, and in the lower left, the wow. impact within 60 minutes would be, would be very significant. The city becomes a lot more yellow. Um, yeah. <laughs> let's see what, <laughs> what happens. Let's make it greener in the end. <laughs> Interesting um, color. The <laughs> important thing is uh, that these models are interconnected, right? So working with all of our partners there below, TNO, PTV Group, the Flemish government, TomTom, this is not just a sole project. All these models are interconnected. Uh, traffic has an impact on uh, air quality and so forth. So this is, what we, um, this is what the strength of this model is. It's not just one model above the other. They're interconnected. But it's all simulation based on big data, uh, yeah. data from the past, right? Yeah. And what is this used for? Well, what this tool is great for and what it's used for around the world is for planning. City planning. What if we take this? What if we do this infrastructure work? What if we do this policy change? What would the impact be on my city and on all the aspects of my city? Not just, not just that. But it's a planning tool. But today we want to go beyond planning. It's we not want. just planning. We want to go to real time. We want to go to. We want to understand in real time what is happening in my city right now. I have a disaster, I have some kind of scenario, what is happening from a traffic perspective, an air quality perspective, and so on. And that's exactly what I think is so special about this project. Digital twins were not really new. Yes, we've done some um, further integration with new technologies, but we've taken it a step beyond, and we've deployed hundreds of sensors throughout the city of Antwerp. We've got mobile sensors, we've got, um, we, we've got fixed sensors, and I want to show you a little bit the impact of those sensors on that, uh, on that same model. For example, if you look around the ring road of Antwerp, there is a number of traffic loops right now. They're there, uh, the Flemish government is taking care of that. And in those models, you basically can see, or in those sensors, you can see in real time how much traffic is passing by, how many cars, vans and trucks. Everybody knows that Antwerp is the key, the key issue is mobility. We need to solve that mobility problem, but in order for us to solve that problem, we need to understand it a lot better. And we need to keep the, 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 the mobile, the mobility flowing um, from and to the port, and that's why 
just looking at the city, just looking at one part of the city is not enough. You need to look beyond. You need to work with people from city to port and beyond. And that's why this kind of data is so important for us to better understand how to really solve that problem. Jan, yep. we have more data, right? We have more data. This we data is uh, real time. Of course, this is pre recorded video, but we get the data real time every minute. So, this is actual real time data flowing into the model. And you can re inject it back into the model, and it takes Indeed. care of it, and it goes into the model. The data gets bigger, but we're having better and better information to base our assumptions and our city decisions upon. We yeah. have more data, right? We, we have, have also more data. We have, um, I think we also have um, nitrogen dioxide. So, we have. And this is funny, you see those little dots? That's actually a car from the B-Post. We have an alliance partnership with the B-Post. There's about 20 vans with air quality monitoring sensors on top of their roof. The cool thing about these vans is that they almost hit every street in Antwerp from a daily perspective. We get now daily, uh, very detailed data of all these uh, little vans going through the city. And of course, we want more cyclists to have sensor capabilities. We want to have a lot more data, because the richer our data model becomes, the better we can make decisions, the cleaner we can make uh, the city, the better we can guide the traffic throughout the city. So this kind of modeling capabilities is key. We've decided first, the government has decided for us to first do this in Antwerp. Um, and the goal is very quickly to expand it to the rest of Flanders, because at the end of the day, we want to solve it for a region and not just for one city. Right, Jan? Yes. So we just don't have a planning tool. We have a real-time dashboard on what's happening in the city. And of course, this is just the beginning. This is just where we are right now. You can visit us. We are in the iMac booth. You can actually play with it yourself. We have it on a big screen. Uh, you're invited to, uh, to join us and to play with this tool as it is. And even further, your company or whether your government or whatever, join us. If you have real-time data, that's important. If you have tools, if you have infrastructure that you say, hey, this could be important to embed in this view, in this planning tool, but also in this uh, real-time dashboard, we invite you to talk with us, and we'll see how you, can, how you can have your technology, your information, your data inputted, and how you can use it again. This is an open invitation to all of you. Uh, come visit us at the iMac booth, and uh, as our slogans say, uh, let's design a smarter city together. Great. Thank you so much.